It seems that gaming companies everywhere are just cashing in on people's nostalgia for games that they grew up with during their childhood recently. A lot of games that I played growing up are revered classics that people still talk about to this day, and some of them were pretty out there and, <laughs> frankly, just weird-ass games. I was nominated recently by a friend to do a top five weird-as-fuck games I played when I was growing up list. But then when I thought about it, I realized that there were way too many games for me to pick from, so I thought, fuck it. Let's do 10. I'm Steve of War, and this is my top 10 weird as fuck games from my childhood. The 90s were a crazy time to be growing up in. It was the decade that brought us baggy skate jeans, hair gel, pogs, and the Spice Girls, among other things. So naturally, this meant that the majority of video game heroes were all hip and cool dudes that wore their hats backwards and sunglasses on all the time, no matter what time of day it was. Much like this guy. Magic Pockets is a game about a kid who was given a magical pair of trousers by an old man, and <laughs> yes, that is what it says in the instruction manual. It was released for the Amiga by the infamous Bitmap Brothers, who made other great games like Gods and Speedball. I loved to play this game a lot while growing up, but looking back, it's only now that I realize just how much of a weird game this really was. You play as a kid that throws tornadoes from his pockets, then uses said tornadoes to swallow up his enemies and then turn them into sweet, sweet candy. The enemies in this game were also weird as fuck, and they range from snakes to skeletons to, uh, sentient bogeys? And you could even find various hats to wear that gave you armor, teleported you to secret rooms, and even one that lets you shoot lasers! 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 It was a hard game as well, and I only managed to get to the second world a small handful of times before running out of lives. But if you still have an Amiga or into <coughs> emulation... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You should definitely pick up a copy and play it. You'll have a blast. You turn bogeys into sweets using tornadoes. That is all! LucasArts were the undisputed kings of adventure games back in the day, with games like Secret of Monkey Island, Indiana Jones The Fate of Atlantis being among some of the best adventure games ever made. No, sorry, sorry, sorry. There were some of the best games ever made. Period! I had a copy of something called the Lucasfilm Collection while growing up, and it had a whole bunch of awesome games packed inside of it, such as Monkey Island, Maniac Mansion, and my number nine entry on this list, Loom. Loom was one of the most enchanting, charming, and creepy as fuck games I played whilst growing up, as it had both a whimsical feel due to the richly detailed and magical environments, and when the game pulled back the curtain on the magical and colorful facade, it was just straight up dark and violent. Like this scene where a guy rips a hole in the universe to summon the god of chaos to bring about a new world order, but angered by this, chaos decides instead to not just kill him, but completely blow him apart, causing his flesh to melt and his head to fly past the screen. Holy shit! LucasArts, man, they're fucking dark. Like, really dark when they want to be. It also featured music taken from the ballet Swan Lake by Tchaikovsky. It was the first adventure game by LucasArts to do away with the whole verb command mechanic in favor of a completely music-centric system, where players could learn songs and then use them like spells to cast on objects to solve puzzles. I played this at a very young age for the Amiga, so a lot of the dark stuff really freaked me out, but it still kept me playing and entertained me right through to the very end. You can still pick this game up for pretty cheap on Steam at the moment, and you can even play it on Mac. Too. I really advise that you do pick it up because it's definitely one of the more unique and enchanting games on this list. Though, take my advice and try and track down either the Amiga or FM Towns versions, as they've stripped a lot of the good stuff out of the original and only really added corny voices that really don't do the game any justice. I'm looking for a flock of swans. Swans? Swans! Do you know? Birds! Oh, swans! Of course! We should have known! Everybody comes here when they want swan! Mario, Sonic, Crash, Spyro, Banjo-Kazooie, all of these names titans among gaming, and have had games that are held in such high regard by gamers who remember playing them. And rightly so. With games like Ukulele trying to bring back the classic style platformer, I feel it's time to look at another one of the more unique platform games of all time, often regarded as a classic, but has been left to fade into obscurity. And that game is... Super Brawl! This game is awesome. You could run, jump, fly, throw... Whatever this thing is at people. Play a slot machine to save your progress and find really cool secrets that reward exploration. Each of the worlds were really well designed and there were a total of six worlds to visit that ranged from castle to circus to the friggin' moon! 
longer. We're all familiar with the anthropomorphic cartoon animals at this stage, but it's how this frog got his powers that makes this game kind of weird and amazing at the same time. Once there was a prince who had his princess stolen away by a witch jealous of her looks and then turns him into a frog so he cannot rescue her. While sulking at the river of sadness, a bottle drift by the prince. He picks up the bottle and it turns out to be... Lucas Aid? Really? He downs the bottle and then poof, turns into Super Frog. That's it. Yes, the popular sports drink sold in the UK gave a frog superpowers. You really can't make this sort of thing up. Fuck Spider-Man, Deadpool, or Batman's origin stories, even though we've seen Batman's a bazillion times already. It's time to stop! This is the greatest superhero origin story of our time. Though it does beg the question, what happens if an actual frog drank Lucasade? Hmm. Another game that has since faded into obscurity that I bet even the most dedicated of retro gamers out there would have never have heard of in their lives was also another advertising vehicle for a UK snack brand. Quaver's Crisps are a brand that is still going in the UK to this day, and no doubt is something that most of my UK viewers would have heard of. What they probably didn't know that this guy here used to be the face of Quaver's and starred in not one, but two video games. Most Amiga people, like myself, have likely heard of Pushover, but it's one step beyond featuring Colin Curley that makes the number seven slot on this list, and with all the best will in the world, I really struggle to describe what the hell is actually going on without sounding completely crazy. A dog wearing a yellow suit gets sucked into a video game, where he has to jump onto floating platforms so that he can then dive into a big bag of curly crisps and escape. <sighs> you know, you get to a point where you look at yourself and you, you sort of question the choices that you made in life. Well, this game kind of has made me do that. So, excuse me, I'm going to take a step outside. There are probably no words that I can really use to accurately describe Zack McCracken and the alien mindbenders other than just flat out fucking weird. This is another early point and clicker from the LucasArts guys that puts you in the shoes of a struggling, possibly sexually frustrated newspaper reporter who uncovers a plot by aliens to turn everyone in the world stupid. Insert current events joke here. And how are they doing this, you may ask? By setting up a fake telephone company and using really tall hats and comedy glasses to disguise themselves as people. And somehow nobody questions this. As a kid, I never completed this game because it was just flat out vague on where to go and what you're supposed to do. I got as far as traveling to Seattle to explore a cave with a three-headed squirrel. Yes, I did just say that out loud. But I couldn't get any further because the cave was pitch black and I couldn't work out how to light a torch and because... I'm an idiot. So I ended up stranded at the beginning area because, like a dumbass, I'd maxed out my credit card. So I ended up harassing this local baker over here over and over and over again until he got so mad he threw a stale baguette at me. This is, this, 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 this is a thing. A, a, a man threw a baguette that was so stale it cracked the pavement. French people, man. They're the real assassins. Those of you who may be watching from outside the UK would have never, ever, ever heard of this guy who's in the next game, like, at all. So when I tell you that a game based off this guy here, who was a national TV mascot on the BBC for years in the UK, had his own pop song and theme parks, and actually fucking existed, you better believe me when I say that we all must have been smoking some really crazy shit back then. Mr. Blobby the Game is a game where you run around levels in order to turn them from black and white into colour, whilst also eating as much random shit as you can. The story of this game literally is just a stupid opening animation of the Blobby family. Yes. This stupid yellow spotted dipshit actually has a blobby wife and made a blobby child with her. And this is why I drink. Who then proceed to bump into each other, casually dropping their child from its pram onto the ground. Because child abuse is fucking hysterical, apparently. None of the game makes any sense in any way, especially where you go from dodging flying robot dogs on what I guess is the moon, to then eating fried eggs whilst underwater on a beach where you shoot a water gun at crabs to turn them into custard which you eat. The weirdest thing about this game is that it isn't even an original game. It's a straight up reskin of a game called Super Troll Islands for the SNES, which some of you may remember being covered recently by the guys at Game Grumps. Only here you play as a troll from the toy line of the same name, and well, I'll leave it up to you as to which one's the more freaky. <laughs> One 
if I were to tell you that there was a game on the PlayStation 1 where you play as a pink-haired cave child that wears green shorts and flips pigs into handbags, your response would likely be, who the fuck are you and how did you get into my house? But my friends, I tell you only truths with that statement, as what I'm about to show you will likely present you with way more questions than actual answers. Tombi, or Tomba, as it's called in the United States, is possibly the most colourful and bonkers game you could ever put in your PlayStation. It's part platformer and part adventure game, where you go around jumping on things and then flipping them around to solve puzzles, collect items and complete quests, all to rid the world of seven evil pigs who have taken over the land and plunged it into turmoil using magic. Yes, evil magic. Pigs. How do you defeat the evil pigs? By throwing them into handbags, of course. Where do you get the handbags? By doing various quests that involve crazy things like eating a... <coughs> Laughing Mushroom, which you then use to convince a dwarf to let you up a mountain because he wants to see you make the biggest smile, and then eat a crying mushroom to then show him how sad you can be. The foliage in this game is really out there, and I mean unlike anything you have likely ever seen in the game, ever. For example, the place where you get these mushrooms have really creepy looking flowers everywhere that either laugh or cry depending on what mushroom you collect. Also, this game has butt tulips that fart when you touch them. Who the hell writes this shit? It's honestly a really fun and enjoyable game that's often looked back on fondly by people who had the chance to play it. However, I did get really badly stuck for ages at one stage, and the game doesn't really do a good job of telegraphing where you're supposed to go. So after spending days wandering around like an idiot, I decided to sell it because I was bored. And oh boy, was that a bad decision. Jesus. Anyone who knows me will tell you that I love me some Japan. Its culture is one of the most interesting in the world. Its cities range from technological metropolises to perfectly preserved time capsules of their past. They're polite, creative, and most importantly, very reserved and respectful. And then there's the incredible crisis game for the PlayStation, which beats you over the head with a stick of insanity until you bleed logic. To put things into perspective, the first sequence of the game you have to complete an office dance class. Then straight afterwards you get chased out of the office building by a giant globe, then fall out of a window and suddenly somehow survive, then you get wheeled away by an ambulance and have to answer a general knowledge quiz. And once you've won the quiz, your reward is to have the ambulance crew toss you out the back into oncoming traffic that you then have to dodge on an ambulance gurney. There are way more games here that I don't have time to mention, but suffice to say that it somehow gets even weirder the more you play through the game. Like, really weird. Well, okay, here's one more. How about a mini game where you have to give your sexy boss an orgasmic level massage whilst on a merry go round. And I bet that you thought that minigame was only from Final Fantasy X 2, didn't you? Oh, Japan. Oh. Oh, oh yes. yes. You're the best. Oh, God. Oh god, this game! Where do I even begin with this? Please tell me how the hell I'm supposed to describe such a pure, unfiltered piece of nonsensical bollocks. You play as some super cool hoverboarders who get kidnapped by something called the Kraken, yes, the actual Kraken, who then wants to turn their skate park into his own personal domain. Yes. That's the plot. What the hell drugs were they on when they came up with this game? Like, really? Look at this game and tell me it's normal. Like, they were not on anything when they came up with this. Did they ever think that this super deformed art style actually looked good? Honestly, really, did anybody take a look at this and think that maybe there was something other than H2O in the water cooler that day? The game's environments barely resemble anything that made any fucking sense. Its controls are fucking shit. And if I were asked to try and best describe it, I'd say it's like Back to the Future 2 meets a fuck ton of LSD whilst being jizzed on by the entire 90s clothing range from Quicksilver. And one of the boss fights in this game, oh yeah, there are boss fights by the way, has you racing against a grinning dog rolling on a massive beach ball down a tunnel made from what I only imagine the inside of my brain looking like whilst I have a fucking seizure. You wouldn't have thought that this game came out from the same studio that pumped out Lemmings and Wipeout. It's not even possible. How the hell did they fuck this up? How the hell did they come up with this? What is it? <laughs> okay, before I reveal what my number one pick is, I'm just gonna play the opening cutscene. Just the cutscene and nothing else. And I bet that 95% of you will never be able to guess what happens next. So here it is, my number one weirdest game from my childhood. Aaron Aloha, a 
black shadow threatening the safety of peaceful worlds, an evil scientist who frightens children and is bent on slavery. A giant robot has seized a peaceful world and carried it off. Aloha's evil plan is to turn it into a huge private retreat for himself. Universal City Hall, here to help the people. Robert can do the job. Let's go, Robert. Jump and go. Jumping Flash for the PlayStation 1. A game where you play as a robotic rabbit who has to save the world from an evil scientist called Baron Aloha, who has stolen parts of the world to use them as his own private holiday resort. I am not making this up. I am not under the influence of any drugs or narcotics. This is real. Someone made this up. And how do you do this? I hear you all not ask me at all. By running around, taking pills, collecting giant carrots and power-ups, and by jumping on things. I mean, what other game lets you pilot a giant rabbit mech and go on a laser-blasting rampage whilst tripping absolute balls? <laughs> well, except for the sequel which I also played. It's all so crazy, colourful, hyperactive, nonsensical as fuck, and bonkers. And that, my friends, is why this game here is my number one weird as fuck game from my childhood. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to drop a like. Or if you're new to the channel, why not subscribe and become a patron for more content like this? What were your weirdest childhood games that you played whilst growing up? Whatever they were, be sure to comment below and let me know. You can also follow me on Twitter and on Facebook, and also check out my website, extremegamingchallenge.com, for other great channels. Anyways, thanks a lot, guys, and I'll see you on the next one.